Hey data fans, Reed here. So today's video is going to be a follow up on the vertical and improved waterfall visualization that I did a few weeks back that leveraged a bit of visual calc magic. So one of the comments that I got was how to be able to create that, but also add stacked categories in there. So bringing us into an example in front of us, here's the one that I built that has some of these zoom sliders and a few other things that were nice extra features because it was a stacked chart. And essentially now what I've created is something that stacks these, but also breaks out these sections across three different categories for enterprise, online, and retail with those stacked within each of the sections of the waterfall. So I wanna walk through one, how I built this, enhancing what I did a few weeks ago, but also talk about some considerations and scaling restrictions that you might have for this. So let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So starting from the conversation of the waterfall chart that I built a few weeks back, I will link you to the video down below of the original video for this, but essentially long story short, I ended up leveraging a couple of visual calcs and hidden calculations that were in here to be able to create this, look at the previous value, next value, and uh, intuitively design this start in balance with a waterfall flow across all of these. Now, again, the request on this, building this out was, how could we add categories into here? Now, for the fact that this is, in this visual, something that is leveraging multiple measures, I can't just go onto the legend like I could on other visuals and simply add the segment into here. It won't let me do that because I have multiple measures already. Now, you might notice that I actually have a bunch more visual calcs in here and calculations as well. So to do this, I actually needed to create additional calculations in here at a few different levels. So in this case, there was three categories that I wanted to, to display, enterprise, online, and retail as segments. So in the type of visual that at least I built, you would need to create a multiplication of certain measures by a factor of whatever those categories are. So that's where the non-scalability comes in. So what I ended up doing is for these, I created the base measure of online, retail and enterprise for the amount. So whatever my base amount was, I needed three more versions of that. And then for the data labels as well, technically I needed another version of these due to that data labeling issue that I mentioned in the last one where it wouldn't display the dollar value, just showing the native visual. I had to have a separate measure with that formatting to get it to work. I don't know if that's a bug or a feature, but that was something that we encountered. So I'll kind of walk through this again from the uh, additional calculations that uh, I put into here. So a few things that remained relatively unchanged. If I come into this, the base calculations that we have as an example for like previous amount, that remained the same. But the things that I now have broken out are the calculations that I have here for my enterprise. So I have three negatives, three positives that I built out in here. So it is the exact same formula that I did last time. I included a down arrow for the negatives and an outline one for the positives just to help indicate up or down for those for the legend. But it's basically just taking the amount that I have here times three that I put into this visual and hid. And then I did either negative for that or positive for that. So again, just taking what I had previously done and inherited, but just multiplying these by three. And I'll even actually arrange these just next to each other for consistency sake. But now rather than one negative, one positive, I have three positive, three negative for that with the three X being hidden. And I needed to modify also my base calculation in here to basically do the running sum off of those. So not a lot of modifications. It maybe took me 15 or 20 minutes to add these in, but I would need three X because I have three categories here. If I had had four or five, I would need all of those. So maybe take into consideration, you know, how many there are, do you have a fixed or varied amount of these as you start to build this out? So yes, it is possible to create a stacked chart like this. It looks and operates efficiently in its result. Um, but one thing that I would say is another comment that I got on here is that this works with positive numbers. So it's expecting that my start in balance, these values are all staying in the positive range. It's a little trickier if it actually dips completely below the zero line. For some of these drops in values, I might do a future video on talking about how to address that and seeing that since that was another question in here. But it is something that is at least manageable and it does give you an end result 
once we look at the final product in here, we have uh, all of those scales into there. And again, something that's not provided natively. Now, this does go to a diminishing return um, sometimes of what to do natively with measures and visual calcs versus at some point, if I have a lot of different categories, I'm now having to deal with positive and negative numbers. I might also just encourage you to check out some uh, custom visuals that are in the visual store. Uh, one example being the Analytics Plus a visual that I personally use from InfraRiver. That's kind of a Swiss army knife of a lot of different visualizations. This has about seven, six or seven different types of waterfall charts that make it really easy to use. Uh, but it just depends on where you want to spend your effort. You can leverage a bunch of native visuals in here, start to do a lot of DAX magic. But at some point, I feel like I hit a wall where is it worth it to you know spend four hours building out something like this versus considering maybe subscribing to a custom visual that can do that for you. Um, and again, like the InfraRiver one works. Some of you I know use Zebra BI and a few others. Um, but there are custom visual options out there that might make this a little bit easier for you. Uh, but I did want to really show you this is possible, do a quick follow-up video on this and, uh, and show you that it is something that can be done inside of Power BI. And with the other one that I did, you still get that scalability. Um, I did ensure using keep filters that I could select one or multiple of these at a time and stack them. And the nice thing is that positive and negative still works in terms of the alignment. So I do like that that all works within uh, this environment. As always, feel free to drop some comments down below on any questions or suggestions for a future video. It always helps continue to give me ideas. Check out some of my related content here in the upper left. And as always, liking, commenting, and subscribing does help my channel go grow. And I do hope someday to you know, hit 100,000 subscribers uh, down the road, which I'm sure will happen eventually. But otherwise, I will see you all in my next video.